Mr. Beard here with your class recap for Wednesday, May 2nd. Um, we started today <clears throat> by using contextual vocabulary, meaning we have a made-up word um, and using only the root in this word and the context of the sentence, you have to determine what that word means. Now this is simulating coming across a very difficult word either on the SATs or in your own reading. Um, and the two best tools you can use to tackle what that word may mean is using its root, if you know the root, and we've covered a lot of roots, so hopefully um, you'll have some sort of common root, and if that's not the case, you can always use the context it's being used in in the sentence. So we've got this made-up word here, zagrophobia. Hopefully you can recognize one of our roots um, in this word, which is phobos, or phobia, which means fear. It's a pretty common root, so even if you hadn't had this, I'm hoping you could surmise uh, that phobia means you're afraid of something. So we know there's some sort of fear here, and the context of the sentence says Mr. Beard did not go anywhere near the copiers, so this stands out to us because he did not go anywhere near this, we know there's fear, so he's probably afraid of copiers or technology in some way, and instead sending his TA to do the work for him. So even if I did not know phobia meant fear, we could look at this sentence and say, okay, he did not go anywhere near this, instead sending that. So either he's lazy or he's afraid. So you can really narrow down your choices um, either way. And fortunately, we had a common root, so we were able to surmise he's afraid of copiers, um, instead sending his aide to do the work for him. So that's how we started class. And then we talked about tone. Tone is the author's attitude toward writing. It's the mood the author intentionally sets. You see this tone equals intention, and we'll talk about why we make that distinction here in a second. But So the author's attitude, the author's mood that he sets in his writing or her writing. The reason we make this distinction and use this mnemonic device of tone equals intention is because mood is the feeling I get when I read something. So if I'm reading something by Hemingway and it makes me very sad, that's the mood that I have. Um, so mood equals me equals my feelings, whereas tone is author's intention. Then using this, um, we read Little Things by Raymond Carver. The story is on our class website, under this video in fact, is an attachment. So you can go ahead and read that if you're absent. You will want to read this, um, as there will be questions pertaining to this on a future quiz. Now this story is interesting, it's perfect for tone because there's, there's so little said in this story. Raymond Carver is a brilliant short story writer. He does not hold your hand, he does not tell you, this guy is evil, this world is, you know, whatever. He gives you few details and lets you make those decisions on your own as a reader. They call this the iceberg effect. It's connected to minimalist writing, meaning they give you minimal details and you have to uh, survive, surmise or um, assume the rest based on the details at hand. And the reason they call it the iceberg effect, if you look at this iceberg here, on the top you can see you know, this, this decent sized chunk of iceberg, but what's unsaid, what's under the surface is much larger um, and much heavier. And that's how Hemingway wrote um, and Raymond Carver um, wrote this short story. So using the details at hand, we had to say what we think the tone is of the story, and we used highlighters to highlight key words um, that set that tone. Much like we looked at the context of our vocab word to begin class, we're looking at uh, contextual words that set the tone. Then we had to talk about, unfortunately, um, something not so nice uh, happens to this child's um, baby, and, and what do we think really happened because again Carver does not tell us directly. Then we had to look at how do the parents really feel about this baby and we read a really quick excerpt um, from the Old Testament about um, King Solomon who had to make a decision about these two women um, both claiming they, they owned a child and it was their baby. Um, one woman looked at the child as a possession whereas the other loved it and so we had to scale where do we think these parents fit in that? Um, do, they, do they love this baby or are they using it as some sort of um, object to be one. And then the last thing we discussed is why does Carver choose not to name the man and woman? He does not name them. He does not name the baby. He doesn't describe them. We have no idea what they look like. Um, so we're looking at authorial intent here. Why would he do that? Um, so if you were not here, go ahead and read that and answer those questions on your own. Thanks for listening.